and the next generation of mobile internet is being rolled out across six UK cities today and it includes Belfast. The network, EE, is the first to provide 5G with other networks expected to follow in the coming months or so. Well, Pete Oliver is from EE. He says there will also be improvements for customers outside the Belfast 5G area. People will continue to see 4G coverage improve this year and, and, and in future years as well. Um, but 5G solves the problem in big cities where you need really, really high speeds and fast capacity. And that's why we're starting uh, in Belfast. We'll be upgrading 100 sites a month across the UK. And so people are going to see this technology roll out over the next few years. Well, Kevin Curran is a professor of cybersecurity at Ulster University. Kevin, thanks for joining us. First of all, can you explain to me the difference between 4G and 5G, and should I be very excited about it? Basically, the difference is the amount of bandwidth available and the speed. In other words, that it promises to be anywhere between 10 times to 100 times faster than 4G. Um, and of course, you can get speeds now, um, again, in some of the areas of up to 10 gigabits per second, which is really a phenomenal speed. But of course, that is only in optimal conditions, again, in selected areas. And 5G by itself doesn't, be, it doesn't send a signal as far as traditional 4G. So you need a lot more cell tower locations, again, to be able to deliver 5G to the population. Now, not everyone has expensive phones, of course, Kevin, nor has the issue around battery life ever been conquered. So that's surely a problem when it comes to 5G. It, it is. I mean, the number one thing at the moment, the problem is obviously there's a very lack of 5G phones. And most people do not have 5G phones. Now, there is the Samsung Galaxy S10 5G and you show me have a phone and there's a a very good value, a high-end phone called the OnePlus 7, which is also 5G enabled. So first of all, you have to have a 5G phone and some of the phones actually you have to update them as well. So you have to have that to be able to get the 5G signal. And of course, then with EE and other operators, you also will have to go over to a 5G data plan or a 5G plan as well. So there is expense involved in this, of course. And, and of course, it, it really is only going to be rolled out within the city. It'll take some time before we're living in a rural area where you get a 5G signal, but really it'll generally be the major cities at the start. But of course, it'll take a while before the public generally move over to 5G handsets because at the moment there is only a handful of them on the market. And of course, very briefly, Kevin, Huawei is facing a, a number of problems at the moment and 5G will be attached to them. It, it is because one of their phones, they were one of the first up, um, manufacturers to deliver a 5G phone which went on sale and their Mate 20 was actually pulled from the store, for instance, for EE who, who have a number of handsets available to customers. So they are facing major problems. I mean, we've never seen this before where literally a company is, um, is being wiped out very um, quickly. In other words, uh, the United States have moved to be stop suppliers, suppliers of their mobile broadband chip, suppliers of the actual memory that they use, suppliers, anyone at all in the United States has been told that they cannot supply hardware and software to Huawei. Okay. So really what you have is what was what has become the second largest phone, mobile phone manufacturer in the world has literally had all its supply chain stopped. Okay. Kevin, good to talk to you. Thanks for that. Kevin Curran, Professor of Cybersecurity at Ulster University.